All right. So I welcome you all once again to today's boot camp, uh, uh, June's boot camp, basically. And uh, I hope, I definitely know you guys will enjoy it. So I would like you guys to really pay attention to every detail, as will be mentioned in every step of the lectures that you guys will be receiving. All right. So, of course, we are starting from the very foundation, which is basic structure. Okay. So, when we are dealing with basic structure, all right. So, what do we define basic structure as? Okay. We define basic structure as the expected structure. Every trader expects a series of higher swing guys and lows in a bullish market and a series of lower swing guys and lows in a bearish environment, which in reality, it is much complex than that, hence the name expected structure, all right? So basically, for example, here, in a bearish environment, once you open your chart, the first thing you want to identify, what the first thing you even see is structure, is either or just seeing, looking at your chart without drawing anything yet, without bringing out your trend line tool, your horizontal tool, or whatever it is that you want to bring up. So just looking at your charts alone, you tend to want to look at structure. You will see structure. That is the first thing you will see. That is the comprehensive nature of every market, right? So that is the comprehensive nature of every market. Okay, so for example, structure itself, we know that Everything about each chart is based on structure, stock structure, or even each currency pair structure will differ because of some factors. For example, we say that forex markets pro exist to provide a service. All right, they are mostly utilitarian. Participants have different motivations and what and objectives. So that is Forex market, the foreign exchange market, which is the most common one we trade, which is the most liquid one. However, the stock market exists to create what? To create wealth. They are entirely speculative, okay? That is all participants have the same motivation. When it comes to stock market, everyone wants to make profit, okay? Everyone wants to make profit when it comes to stock market, and of course, Stock markets are quite illiquid compared to the forest market. Forest market is the most liquid, you know. When we're talking about liquidity, simply put, that is money. So the money in forest market daily is trillions of dollars, as we all must know. All right. So it is very important to understand the fact that the forex market exists to provide a surplus. Okay, why the stock market exists to create what to create wealth. That's why you see that most people that trade stocks trade it for long, they hold it for long. All right. So because they are anticipating long term, they are they are they are interested in the long term view of things. But for this market, we have different ways things are. So because of even how each of these markets is designed, there is simply means that structure is very important. How each one presents itself is very important and it is very important for us as traders as well to take note when choosing which of these we want to major on do we want to major on stocks like indices such as us 30 Dow jones dax 30 s p 500 or nas 100 as the case may be so each of these are designed to be bullish they are always bullish. Like generally, we are talking about the macro view. Now. We are not interested in, uh, about the uh, micro view. So when it comes to stock, but of course, as traders, as normal common forest traders, if we only we are trading um, your state and the likes, as intraday traders, we tend to like make decisions based on intraday criteria or at most maybe go into the next day, more like a swing position, a one day swing position, a two-day swing position in order to actually benefit quickly from it. But the normal way to actually trade most of these stocks is actually to 
hold them long term in terms of in aim of making profit because in the long term overall they are always bullish that is stock that is their permanent word characteristics of structure all right now coming back to basic structure we say that for basic structure all right we have Lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. That is a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, uh, sorry, lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. As what, what makes us say this is what? This is a bearish structure, all right, in a certain market. And of course, for a bullish structure, right? For a bullish structure, we tend to look at things from the angle of a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, higher high, higher low. All right. So this is these are basically things we want to see when we are dealing with each of this senior row, all right? So having established this fact, having established this fact, then we can take a step further into looking at each of the examples on chart, right? That is for a bearish environment, we can clearly see how we have a low or low, lower high lower low lower high all right so we have a uh here this must be lower low sorry so lower low lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high lower low and lower high all right so this is what constitutes a bearish environment and for a bullish environment For a bullish environment, we are majorly import, uh, interested in the series of higher highs and higher lows. So for a bullish environment, we have a higher high, a higher low, a higher high. This is not the higher high because it is not above here, right? So a continuation break of structure, okay? So that is it. So this is just internal what? Internal structure. Of course, I'm saying this because I know that you all are not new to this all right you all are not new students so a higher high a higher low a higher high a higher low and a higher high all right so this is basically the characteristics flow of what makes a bullish what a bullish structure all right now going into advanced structure from the first example that we say, we can see that here it is drawn that this is more like the reality, the real structure, such that even after price breaks a structure, it seemed almost as if price breaks structure up again, and yet price didn't go higher, you know? Most people will be expecting that, oh, we now have a break of structure to the upside, but what did we see? Instead of that to happen, Price still breaks structure to the downward again. As if that wasn't enough, price still read this high as break of structure, all right? And yes, still later go to the downward direction. So this is the reality that we face when it comes to the market. That is, the basic structure is not, it only gives us the picture, the overall picture of what a bullish trend or a bearish trend actually looks like, all right? But in reality, it doesn't in any way give us the true nature of market and that will make us to have to look further into how ever we used to view the market if how we used to view the market is based on the basic structure then we need to understand that here we have to face the reality we have to face the objective notion of market all right so and that is why we have to go into the concept of advanced 
that is real structure. All right, so what is real structure? Okay, this is majorly looking into the complexities of how structure could present itself. I'm breaking it down by getting to understand every single element around what? Around structure. However, the understanding of this will not stop here as there is no way structure could be well understood without the consideration of what? Without the consideration of liquidity. We need to underline that. All right. So without the consideration of liquidity. Mm. Plus twist here is that this is the real foundation of understanding what? Liquidity. That the structure itself is the real foundation of actually getting to understand liquidity. Now, let us dive into the elements of structure. All right. Now, let's look into various elements of structure. Various elements of structure. All right. So what is the first element we want to look at? We want to look at the major liquidity and external liquidity. The major liquidity and the external liquidity. In a bullish environment, major liquidities, ML, that is the short form, are the higher highs which are protected, that is not rated as price develops a bullish structure. In a bearish environment, of course, the reverse is the case. Bearish and bullish are word and opposite. In a bearish environment, major liquidities, ML, are the lower highs, all right, which are protected, not rated, as price develops a bearish structure, which means our major liquidities are like the major structure points in a bullish environment, the major structure points or the protected highs are the higher ones, are the higher lows. Why in a bearish environment, we have them to be the lower ones, the lower highs. All right. Now, in a bullish environment, we are here now. Okay. So that is where we are at the moment. In a bullish environment, external liquidities are... EHEL are the higher highs which are not protected, rated, as price develops a bullish structure. And in a bearish environment, external liquidities, EHEL, are the lower lows which are not protected. All right? That is, they are rated. All right? So as price develops a bearish structure. All right? So, and we can categorically see them in a bullish environment. We can see what we have here. We have a so we can see what we we've got here. We have a major liquidity, external liquidity. All right. So the higher words, the higher highs are the external liquidity. Price keep breaking the previous high to form a new high, breaks the previous high to form a new high, breaks breaks the previous high to form a new what? A new high. All right. Why the lows, the higher lows are protected. So price protect the higher lows, ML, they are the major liquidities, ML, ML, and ML. All right. So the so we have successfully actually dealt with that. In the bearish environment, the reverse is the case, of course. All right. We have the ML to be what? To be the protected. That is the lower lows to be protected. Lower lows, lower lows, ML, lower lows in the bearish environment. And we have the word, oh, sorry, lower highs rather. Lower highs are protected. Why the lower lows are unprotected? They are the ones to be rated, which are the external liquidities. All right. Now, let's take a step further and look at other elements of real structure so the next elements we want to look at are major structure range and minor structure range all right in a bullish environment major structure range msr is the swing distance between a swing higher low to a swing higher word higher high in that in the direction of the what of the bullish trend why in a bearish environment Major structure range MSR is the swing distance between 
a swing lower high to the swing lower low. All right. So in the direction of the bearish trend. And what is our minor structure range? A minor structure range, MNR, is the swing, distance between a swing higher high to a to the higher what to the higher low in the opposite direction. That is very important. Yeah, in the same direction as the bullish trend, but here we're having the opposite direction, which means here a minor structure range to a bullish trend is a bearish trend. I hope I make I'm making sense. A minor structure range, a minor structure range to a bullish trend to a bullish trend is a bearish trend. All right, is a bearish trend. Okay, so a minor st structure range to a bullish trend is a bearish trend and vice versa, of course. That is a minor structure range to a bearish trend is a what? Is a bullish trend, all right? So let's look at the schematics of it. So here we have a uh, higher low, higher high. The distance between the two constitutes our MSR, all right? That is major structure range, all right? While from the higher high down to the higher low, that is the pullback is the word, MNR, minor structure was structure range. Okay, major, higher low to higher high, high, minor, higher high down to what? Higher low, major, higher low to higher high, then downward, higher high to higher low. All right, so higher low to higher high, MSR. So that is it. And the reverse, of course, is the case in a bearish trend, right? The reverse is the case in a bearish trend. So in a bearish trend, basically, what do we have between the lower high to the lower low? We have the MSR, lower high to the lower, oh, sorry, the lower low back to the lower high, we have the MNR, all right? Lower low back, you can see where the arrow is pointing to. So please note that, all right? So you can see here, my arrow is pointing up, showing you that movement from lower low to the lower high is what constitutes an MN what? An MNR, that is minor structure range. While from lower high down to lower low, the arrow pointing down is the what? Is the major structure range, all right? So having understood all these, then we can take a step further to actually check on chat what things actually look like, all right? So in a bullish environment, we have the external liquidity. To be the one being rated, continuation break of structure, major liquidity protected, Major liquidity protected, external liquidity rated, right? So we have the word external liquidity, the major liquidity, and the external liquidity. All right. So these are what? These are the basics of things. So here we have in a bearish environment, we have the Lower highs to be protected, major liquidity, major liquidity, major, major, external to be the unprotected one, that is the one that will be rated, external liquidity, external, external. External liquidity, major liquidity, all right? So this is the order of the day for both. And for, and for, MSR and MNR. So we have the higher high, the higher low, higher low forming the higher high. So the movement from the higher low all the way down to this is the range. A range is a distance between point A and point B. 
So the distance between them, everything that happened between the higher low and the higher high is what we call the major structure range. All right. While the reverse is true as well for minor structure range. So what is the reverse? The movement from the higher high down to the higher low is what we call minor structure range, MNR, all right? So for the bearish environment, same thing in opposite direction. So we have the lower high and the lower low, all right? So the movement from lower high to the lower low is our major structure range, while the movement from the lower low to the lower high is the minor structure range. Carp down, all right? A bullish trend is the minor structure range of a bearish trend. A bearish trend is the minor structure range of a bullish trend. Straightforward and simple, all right? Then we take a step further. Part of element of structure to look into is imbalance and mitigation so this imbalance and mitigation will be like the part one of imbalance and mitigation when we get to imbalance and mit in imbalance itself we will see imbalance in different ways we will now know that it seems almost as if we are just getting familiar with imbalance but just the normal common ones that everyone is worth is used to is what we'll be dealing with here in introduction to real structure or advanced structure as we have chosen to call it all right so imbalance and mitigation there will be a deeper look all right into what imbalance and mitigation in the latter lectures all right so for the basic part which is needed to explain structure an imbalance is on mitigation of an area of demand or supply represented on charts by three consecutive candles in which the week of the first candle high or low does not touch the week of the third corresponding candle low or high and vice versa as represented in the diagram below all right imbalance or fair value gap or inefficiency or whatever you've chosen to call it even though we'll see the differences when we get to the major topic involving that, words are often, are often words used interchangeably. But context may differ, as we will get to understand in later lectures. All right? So we can see here, for example, this is candle one. All right? This is candle two. And this is candle three. The low of the first candle does not touch the high of the third candle. So there we say that an imbalance does exist there. All right, so which simply means that an imbalance happens when there is not enough demand to complement supply and when there is not enough supply to complement demand. However, if there is no imbalance, there will not be movement in the market. That is the funny thing. There has to be imbalance in the market as we'll get to see under the topic imbalance itself in later lectures in the bootcamp that the necessity for an imbalance is what drives the market. If there is no imbalance, there is no movement in market. That is just the reality. All right? Because it is just more like at the supply side, all right? It's more like at the supply side. We're saying that there exists a, 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 a liquidity of $500 million dollars and also the buyers that are approaching the side is also $500 million. Also at the demand area, we, we now say liquidity of $500 million, same thing. And also the sellers that are, uh, sorry, the buyers that are approaching here are also approaching with $500 million. Now, the buyers and sellers here does not in any way mean that they want to buy anything from the market, all right? That is not what it is. That is not what we are trying to say. 
when we say sellers are approaching supply liquidity area, it means that people that want price to go down, people that want to pay the market maker, that they want to pay the market maker and want him to drive price downward. They want price to go down. So those are sellers in that scenario. So not as if they are selling anything into the liquidity of the market. So if a scenario like this happened, then we say that this market is completely balanced. Then trust me, nothing will move it. In a balanced market, nothing will move. That is a stationary space whereby nothing will move. All right? So that is a balanced market. All right? So we'll see more of that in later lectures. Okay, so that is candle one, candle two, and uh, candle three. So the high, the low of candle one does not touch the high of candle three. So we say there exists an imbalance there. Same thing here. We have candle one, candle two, and candle what? And candle three. The high of candle one does not touch the low of candle three. Therefore, we say there exists an imbalance right in there. So we assume that this is balanced, even though there is more to a balanced market or a balanced range, okay? So there is more to it, as we will see in the latter lectures. But for now, we just assume that if candle one, this is candle one, two, three, now we only assume that if can do one and can do what and can do three, this is the high of candle three and this is the low of candle one. If they touch each other, then it is what they are balanced. Same thing between candle two and candle four. All right, the low of candle two touches the high of candle four. We assume that they are balanced just for now. But like I said, in latter or uh, in latter lectures, we will see that there is more to imbalance or a balanced price than this, all right? So mitigation, therefore, is a situation where there is no imbalance between candles and all her structures. Note, every candle in the market is an independent structure on its own on a corresponding lower time frame beyond where it was spotted, that is, Every candle in market is a structure range. That is what we are trying to establish here. Anything that has a low and a high is a what? Is a structure range. It is a fact. And that is it. All right. So there was imbalance here, as we can see. All right. Then price pulls back into heat, filling up the whole of the imbalance. All right. So now let's see a condition for a balanced pullback. There was imbalance, but it is now balanced with the pullback that filled at least 50%. So that is for an imbalance, if an imbalance is already filled up to at least 50%, then definitely we assume that it is already balanced. All right. So at least 50% of the imbalance, more on this will be discussed under imbalance as a major topic in later lectures. All right, so let's take a step further. All right, so we have dealt a little with imbalance and mitigation. And the next thing we want to look at are internal structure and range structure. Now listen and listen good to everything that will start happening from now, I told you guys, these are refinements, all right? These are refinements. So let's take a look. Internal structure first. Internal structures are structures formed before an external liquidity is raided. They are formed or found between the range of major liquidity and external liquidity. An internal structure that has proper mitigation with the extreme premium or discount areas of the major structural range is said to belong to the same time frame 
as that of the major structure. And that which doesn't have mitigation is said to belong to a corresponding lower time frame to that of the major structure range. What are we saying here? All these guys right here are internal structure. This is our major liquidity and this is our external liquidity. After a certain micro break of structure here, all right, the first pullback that we see, the high to the low of that pullback, all right, is our internal structure, all right? So, that is our internal structure. And we also have some smaller structure, some smaller internal structure right here. Now, what that statement is saying is that if, for example, we are assigning that, let's say where we spot this structure is on four hour time frame. All right. If we are assigning a blue degree, as we will see to, in tomorrow's lecture on that time frame difference, if we are assigning a blue degree to the four hour structure, all right. This first internal structure seems to pull back already deeply into this major liquidity low. Therefore, this internal structure, this first one, and this guy will be the same degree. That is, they will be blue degree. However, we will notice that there are some kind of distances between this third one and the previous internal structure. And there probably exists an imbalance between them, high MB. Therefore, these guys here does not carry the same degree as these guys. Hence, we can give it another degree of, let's say, degree orange. All right. So that is what internal structure differences and or, or mitigation, which means price breaking the orange structure does not necessarily affirm a break of structure. This is the foundation of understanding advanced structure. So it does not necessarily mean that we have broken the old structure and then we should start looking for sell to target this low. No, this will be wrong. All right. So what that simply means is that price reading the orange range simply means price is at least ready to come for the blue ranges all right to come for a blue range and might even use that to create a new what a new eye a higher eye all right so that is one thing to note even as we proceed let's look at case number two we have the external liquidity major liquidity all these guys seems to have mitigated each other and therefore we can give them all degree to all this internal structure. But however, there seem to exist what? Imbalance within this guy here and the last range here. Hence, this I right here will be another degree, say again, degree orange, which means price rating this only simplifies that, oh, a lower time frame structure has been broken. Okay, that is, for example, if we are in four hour, Degree orange is probably one hour or even 15 minutes structure. So here as well, let's say degree blue here is one hour structure. Then it simply means this degree orange is 15 minutes. So price reading this does not mean we are ready to start clearing all other ones. It only means price has at least taken out or is ready to take out all 15 minutes structure and ready to mitigate one hour structure, which price might likely use also to create a lower low such that this the new high now form will also become degree blue. All right. I hope it is all making sense. We will get there. Now let's look into range structures. Range structures are structures formed externally 
after the rate or break of external liquidity and are in direction of the trend. They are not pullbacks or minor structure. That is very important. Rate structure are in the direction of the trend. Internal structure also are in the direction of the trend. Grain structures are in the direction of the trend. Okay, that is, if we have something like this, a break of structure, and you have a pullback like this, this is not a range structure. This is a pullback. That is a minor structure. A range structure is that same bullish structure being continued, but just that a range structure time frame is lower that is the structures are of lower time frame degree to that of the internal structure and relatively to that of the major structure range all right so that is a range structure okay so a range structure is formed from the last area of mitigation from the internal or external areas however with other all mitigated, a range structure is formed from the last area of mitigation, from the internal or external areas. However, with other all mitigated, with other all mitigated areas resting, that means there, there shouldn't be a full stop here. Okay, with other all mitigated areas resting beyond whatever initiated or started the range structures, generally. Range structure are of lower time frame to the major structure range since there are all mitigated areas beyond them. Hence, any structure formed by a range structure is of lower time frame degree to the major structure range as well. Now, this will answer some of you all questions. What are the conditions for a range structure? Number one condition to note is that it must be formed externally. All right, that is number one condition. Number two condition is that there must exist an all mitigation beyond it. Which means if after price breaks out of external liquidity, price pulls back such that there is no more unmitigated area beyond such pullback. That is not a range structure. That is, in fact, a new major structure range being formed. What do we mean by this? I hope you guys' questions are getting answered gradually. That is, for example, if we have something like this, a breakout of external liquidity, such that this is our major liquidity. Now, let's say this is the arm mitigation, the imbalance. Imbalance. Price now pulls back. All the way filled the imbalance and every all remaining all mitigated areas beyond it, and then create a new eye. This new low to this new eye is not a range structure. A range structure happens externally. Okay, so this new low to new high is not a range structure. Rather, it is the new structure range. That means this new low is the new major liquidity low, and the new high it form will be the new external liquidity. A range structure, as we, are, we can see from the example drawn here, from this example, as we can see, a range structure is the type of structure such that it happens externally in direction of the trend. All right, that is the number one thing. And also, there still exists unmitigated what area or structure beyond it. That is a range structure. If all these conditions are not met, that is not the range structure. So here we have the same scenario, a major liquidity, an external liquidity. All right. So we have unmitigated structure. This is also an imbalance here, an imbalance here beyond it. So 
And even what this earring structure used to start is a certain external imbalance. All right? That's what this particular ring structure example used to start its own ring structure. That is why this point noted something for us here. See what I wrote here? I put here that from the internal area structure is formed from the last area of mitigation from the internal or what external areas in example two as you can see in the second example right here this range structure started being formed externally an external factor initiated it an external factor started it which was an a certain imbalance that is outside is what started this race structure all right so please every word is intentional every word you see me right here is intentional and in every other thing that we will do every word is intentional very important all right so let us see a scenario. And one thing to also note is that it doesn't matter if a ring structure looks so big, like this first example that we have here. No. Does it meet the criteria that are listed in the definition? Yes. If it does, then it is a ring structure. So for example, here we have our major liquidity ML, external liquidity HEL. All right, then here we still have all mitigated beyond, which is from this low to this high, we can spot an imbalance as we have dealt with in an example of what an imbalance really looks like. So all mitigation beyond showing an imbalance. All right, then we have the last internal structure here, which is this internal structure. So this last internal structure was used to start the ring structure. So where does the ring structure start from? So we have a low, okay, break of structure, a new high, a new low, and a new high. All right. So that is what those are the ring structure. So the ring structure, a low, a high, a low, a high. Remember, it is also in direction of the trend. All right, so that is a range structure. That right there is your range structure. Okay, so let us take a look further into the types of break of structure and the types of fullbacks that we have. So let's first look into the types of break of structure. This is very simple and straightforward. So we have a continuation break of structure. That is, if price is bullish normally, all right, price breaking new highs, BOS, to form a, a, a higher high, breaking new high to form a higher high is a continuation break of structure. That is, break price break structure to continue the same what, the same trend. While if we have the reverse, as in the second diagram, Diagram one and diagram two. If we have the reverse, this is a reversal break of structure, BOS. As why it breaks a bearish. So initially price was bearish, as we can see, and then it got broken and price started a bullish trend. All right. So that is a what? That is a reversal break of structure. That is very simple and straightforward. Now to the major things here. Now to other major things here. There are three types, major types of pullbacks. So we want to look at the types of pullbacks that we have, which is where we will stop for tonight. All right. So before we later get to time frame difference and later lectures okay so there are three types of pullbacks
which we'll look into shortly. So we have the shallow pullback, the, the deep pullback, and the complex pullback. Pay attention to the definition. Like I said, these are the definition you want to stick with and sports. All right? Pay attention to the definitions. Pay attention to the definitions. All right? So a shallow pullback. A shallow pullback is the type of pullback whereby after price rates or breaks, external liquidity, it pulls back into the last mitigated internal structure beyond which exists all mitigated. Exists what? All mitigated internal structure as well. Shallow pullback, therefore, is a potential future liquidity trap. These are keywords. Shallow pullback is the type of pullback whereby price rates, external liquidity, that is the first thing, it pulls back into the last mitigated internal structure, that is the second thing, beyond which exists all mitigated internal structure as well. That is, if you see a pullback whereby there is no unmitigated area beyond that area, then that is not a shallow pullback. No matter how small that pullback looks or something, that is not a shallow pullback. So let's see the schematic before we go to the chart. So the schematic is, this is our external liquidity. We have a break of structure. All right, so this is the last internal structure that mitigated each other. Then right here, we have what? We have, um, right here, we have unmitigated area beyond. Okay, so price use this last internal structure price pull back towards it, and then create a lower low. It is not a pullback if it doesn't create a lower low. So that is one thing. So if you are showing me an example on chart of a shallow pullback, then you must show me that it truly creates, it truly continues the trend. What if, let's say, what I'm trying to say is, maybe you, you show me something like this. These are external liquidity. And price now do something like this you are now showing me on your chart price is presently here you now label this as shallow pullback don't blame me if i talk to you or if i lecture you on what you just did wrong because this has not told you that it is a pullback what if it is a what what if it's a reversal? What if the price wants to reverse totally? Okay, it is a pullback because it creates a lower low. That is why it is a pullback. That is why it is a pullback. All right, so this is our shallow pullback. The last mitigated internal structure, price pullback into it and create a lower low. So that pullback, that means every type of pullback is a minor structuring. Do we all agree? Every type of pullback is a minor structuring. Remember, a minor structuring is a pullback. So every type of pullback is a minor structuring. Do we all agree? Hello, do we all agree? All right, yes. What about others? Do we, we all agree? All right, interesting. That means we are all on the same page. So every type of pullback is a minor structure range. Every type of pullback is a minor structure range. Deep pullback. A deep pullback is the type of pullback whereby after price rates or breaks external liquidity, it pulls back into the last mitigated 
internal structure beyond which exists no other unmitigated internal structure. That is a deep pullback creates automatically a new major structuring. A, a pullback is a minor structuring, but a deep pullback being a minor structuring automatically always creates a new major structuring. Why does it always create a new major structuring? Because it is a pullback that takes every imbalance out of internal structures. It pulls back deeply such that there is no other unmitigated internal structure within that internal structure, which means a major structure, a new major structure will be established by the effect of a deep pullback. Okay, so that is very important. Now, here, all these guys are mitigated, mitigated. They are the same degree, let's say degree blue, degree blue, degree blue. This is the last unmitigated area. A deep pullback will go all the way and mitigate fully that unmitigated area or imbalance. It will mitigate it. All right? So that is a deep pullback. Last unmitigated internal structure, you can see what I put here. Last unmitigated internal structure beyond which exists no other unmitigated structure. All right? Hence, since the pullback comes all the way to the last unmitigated internal structure, then it is a valid word, deep pullback. Okay? So a deep pullback being a minor structure range, MNS, automatically creates a new structure, which means automatically the low of this deep pullback also carries degree blue. Therefore, establishing if this is our former major liquidity, now the low of this deep pullback is the new major liquidity. Okay, so a deep pullback closing by mitigating every unmitigated internal structure within a major structure range, thereby establishing a new what? A new major structure range. All right, now let's look at complex pullback. Let's look at complex pullback. What therefore is a complex pullback? Complex pullback is the type of pullback whereby after price waves or breaks, external liquidity, there is a combination of both shallow and deep pullbacks into structure beyond which the AME, you know, because it is it is combining the power of both. Therefore, we will have to have two types of complex pullback, beyond which the AME or may not exist, beyond which the AME or may not exist, other unmitigated structure. So beyond which the AME, or may not exist, other unmitigated internal structure, and then continues in direction of the initial trend. If a complex pullback high or low, as unmitigated internal structure beyond it, then it is a potential future liquidity trap. If a complex pullback high or low, as unmitigated internal structure beyond it, then it is a complex future liquidity trap. Okay, so let's look at the two categories, case one and case two. In case one, we have the unmitigated, uh, the one that is unmitigated. So in case one, we have this guy, we first have a shallow pullback after price breakout of Western liquidity, BOS. So we have a shallow pullback into the last mitigated structure, which creates a lower low, of course, very important. And then before a deep pull pullback into what? Into structure. Okay, that's why we say it's a combination of a deep pullback. Because, of course, we cannot say we first have a shallow pullback and then we now have a shallower pullback. Of course, this is not shallower because this is deeper than the shallow. 
So definitely the best thing to use, even though it doesn't necessarily carry the major characteristics of what a deep pullback looks like, okay? But of course, it is a deep pullback because it is deep in reference to what? Shallow. Does that make sense? It is deep in relative to what? Shallow. So definitely we call it a deep pullback as well. Even though it may or may not carry the word characteristics of a major deep over. Does that make sense? How would that make sense to us all? You know, when we are talking about relativity, we are using the type of higher, lower, deep, deeper, and all of that. So, but in this case, we can have a scenario of shallower. A shallower pullback will be something like this. Break structure BOS, such that we have a shallow, okay? And then we now have another shallow. So that is, we can now say this guy is shallower than this, <laughs> right? But the fact that this guy is above this guy, then it is what? It is deep in relative to the first thing, which is shallow. So that's why we have to use it as a combination of shallow and deep, even though it doesn't necessarily carry. Because the question may want to pop up that, but since a deep pullback always carries a characteristic of mitigating deeply. Why is it that we are using a combination of deep and shallow, even though this does not clear every unmitigated structure? This is your answer, all right? Everything here is just normal English and nothing complex per se, all right? So a deep pullback follows into the last arm is getting, you know, in this scenario, what we have is that the shallow pullback uses the first, the last mitigated internal structure. Then there is this a certain unmitigated internal structure here again. The deep pullback goes into it and uses it. And then we have a new lower low. So what combination do we have? We have combination of firstly shallow, then deep, which is represented by the green, shallow by purple. Then the combination, which is this big box here, is what forms a shallow pullback. Ah, sorry, it's what forms a complex what? A complex pullback. So, but however, there still exists an unmitigated internal structure beyond. Hence, the complex pullback is a potential future liquidity. Now, you need to be careful here when we will get to imbalance. Remember that imbalance, we recently talked about what we call netting, which are imbalance which we do not expect price to raise. If the imbalance that exists beyond here is a netted imbalance, that is, actually, it is balanced, then this I right here will not be a liquidity. Please start noting that before we get there. I'm saying that because you guys already have, uh, normally my students and you have access to old lectures and you've seen old lectures. That's why I can quickly relate to the, this. If I'm teaching complete newbies, I won't be referencing to the future. All right. So I'm saying that so that you note that when we get there and you can program your mind towards absorbing what true objectivity is in the market, okay? So the combination is the complex pullback, all right? Now, but in this scenario, and I will show you guys a scenario whereby we have a complex pullback, all right? But in the real sense, there seems to be imbalance beyond it, but that, that imbalance is netted. So uh, you might have been expected price to read it, to read it, and you will see that price didn't read it, and I will show you that it is netted. All right, so I will show that example before we close, but that won't be part of this project. That is probably after I stop recording though, because I don't want to mix things up with structure and the future thing, all right? So here we have case two. In the case two, we have our shallow pullback first, our deep pullback next. 
such that beyond them exists an unmitigation, but the deep pullback is able to come all the way to actually mitigate the on mitigation before price actually continue and create a new higher high. Therefore, this is not the liquidity type. This is the true structure type of complex pullback. Okay, so that is the true structure type of complex pullback. Examples of that. So we have a shallow pullback. I picked it from the same example I used for structure range because, of course, shallow pullback is usually the first step that usually starts a range structure. It is just automatic. All right. So the last internal structure as initiator, note that the shallow pullback is also usually the start of range structure. I put it there. All right. Because, of course, this is my book. This is my PDF. All right. That some of you guys have pre-ordered and that they will be getting by June 15. This PDF will change your life. Trust me. But if you don't trust me, don't worry. Don't come for it. But if you trust me, you will come for it. And probably when I will be launching it by that June 15, the price, I might actually change the price. That's the issue. Because I've invested too much into it. By the time we finish this boot camp, you will understand what I'm talking about. All right. So we have this shallow pullback, all right, which is this. So that is our shallow pullback, quite straightforward. And here we have the deep pullback example, break of structure, all right. So the last arm indication we have here is within this low and this. A fair value gap is actually an incomplete pullback. We will see that when we get to true imbalance and all of that. So this I, for example, already even sweep this liquidity, all right? And we have the rejection block. Even inside the rejection block, there exists imbalance. We will talk about that as well when we get to imbalance, all right? So we would see that this deep pullback mitigated everything, even up to the rejection block, up to this imbalance that exists before it and all of that. So this is a valid deep pullback. So we call it a deep pullback. All right. So, and of course, a new low is created. So I told you, if you are showing me an example, this is what your example should look like. There must have been a lower low after or a higher high after the pullback actually happened. Not as if price will be somewhere hanging around here. Maybe present price price. Uh, present price. You will now be showing me that it's a deep pullback. What if price reverses? What if it's a complete reverse and price continue up? So don't do that when you are doing assignment so let's look at complex pullback case one so this type of complex pullback so firstly we have the shallow all right and then we have the deep but however beyond the deep so the shallow uses the first internal structure this is our break of structure bos so the shallow uses the first arm is gated structure then we can see that even between this low and this high, there exists what? Imbalance. So the deep pullback came all the way to use that second one. All right. And then a new high is formed, of course. Higher high. That's why I put higher high here. Somewhere around that corner. So we have a new high. But however, there still exists what? This small imbalance here, as we can see. Also, this incomplete pullback, which is not filled up to 50%. So we can see that there still exists imbalance beyond. Therefore, this is case one, such that this guy here will be a future liquidity for price. All right. So actually what take. So that is case one of complex pullback, whereby we have it as a liquidity type of complex pullback. But here we have the true type of complex pullback. So here we have a shallow pullback which pushes into the first arm mitigation here imbalance all right and then here we have a deep pullback sweeping even this eye as liquidity all right so that is a what in total they both form a complex pullback case two all right so these are 
this different element of what an advanced structure looks like. And I believe that after this day, today's lecture, you guys have now had in-depth understanding of what advanced structure really looks like. All right. So, and that is where we stop for tonight. All right. So, how 